and it rains, it pours, man. I'm doing all kinds of laptop issues now. Um, all right, so my second laptop, um, yeah, I'm still with the battery issue in that one. Another video I'm making about that, recovering batteries. But the, this one started flickering. So, yeah, the screen started flickering. It won't boot anymore. Um, so this is a Dell. What is it? Uh, it's a 7... It's not 7220, but it's uh, like a 10... It's a small... I usually keep this on my uh, my work work bag, my fluke bag. Uh, yeah, I work in IT, so I, I, I keep multiple laptops with me. Like, I typically will use this bigger laptop if I'm going to be on site for a while. But if I'm just doing some quick troubleshooting, I'll, I'll bring my smaller laptop. Um, but yeah, this thing is not booting either, so... <laughs> yeah, got my last job, I, I figured out, like, I was having all kinds of issues. So, um... Alright, so let's uh, figure this out. So, the, I mean, obviously you want to do the basics first. So, I don't know I mean, what's wrong with this thing, so I'm going to first check the power supply. And make sure I'm getting uh, the correct voltage out of this thing. So it should be like my strong glasses. I mean, like I said, obviously check the basics. This thing should be 19.5 volts. Yeah, I removed the battery to fully reset the laptop. That didn't work. And um, this is actually lithium ion. But interesting though, because it's not like an 18650 cell. It's like just a little flat. So usually this would be lipo when they're in a weird. I usually see them as lipo. Um, not lithium ion. But, all right, so that I still didn't fix it. Um, get my multimeter over here. You can just put on this thing. So this should be nice. Usually the 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 positive side is usually the inside pin, and the outside is the uh, DC. Hope you can see it on video. All right. So this should be 19.5 volt. Okay. See that right there? I'm hoping that's an easy it's easy as that. Even All right, so my camera went dead here, so um so yeah, I think that the laptop so a lot of these modern um AC adapters will basically have a, a sense resistor in there. So if they're not connected to a device, they won't be sending power. It's like the same thing with like an ATX power supply. It's not going to activate power unless there's a sense resistor in one of the wires. Um, so I tested, I have a couple different AC adapters and I'm getting the same thing amongst them all. Let me show you what happens. All right, plug this in. Doesn't really matter. Both these AC adapters work. All right. So turn it on. And it's just kind of like uh, the screen kind of comes on. Um, I guess I could hook this up to one of my external monitors and see if that's... I mean, it could just be a bad screen. It could be a lot of things. So, um, I mean, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to check the RAM, check the SSD drive. It runs a... It's not like it's not an M2 drive. It's an older laptop. So it's running actually an MSATA drive, which is... It's what they used before M2 drives. Um, all right, let me go and uh, see if I can hook up to my HDMI cable and see if I'm getting video out of that way. All right, so I noticed that the hard drive is stuck online. I also hooked up to one of my external monitors here. And uh, even with that, I'm not getting any sort of a video output. So um, the cool thing about this laptop is it's not hard to take apart. I mean, I've actually had this laptop for a really, very long time. I'm guessing this is probably 10 years old. Um, oh, yeah, this actually does have the option for a uh, cell, cell, uh, cell, cell card here. Okay, so remember, yeah, so I had the uh, M SATA drive, and uh, Samsung Evo, huh? Yeah, I, I built this, I think I did a video about it, but, all right, so I had crucial memory. Um, at one point, this was my main IT laptop. Um, so I'm going to move all this stuff, and then, uh, you know, check the RAM. I'm actually going to blow it out, too, in my air compressor. And... Uh, you know, start with the basics. Just removing the stuff that might be. If I, it's like if you have a short, if you have a shorted, uh, like an M2 drive or an M SATA drive, um, that will prevent the thing from booting the board. So, one of these devices might be shorted. Yeah, so I'm just gonna reset the RAM. Yeah, do that first. I mean, I'll even try a different piece of RAM. I think this is like DDR3 RAM. So this older laptop. I love it because it's so small, man. It's hard to find these. 
small laptops. We'll add a good deal, you know. So I'm going to take out the M2 or the M SATA drive. Um, yeah, there was no really big, like NVMe drives are way faster, but uh, the M2 drives were about the same speed as a regular SATA drive. All right, I'm going to take out the take out the Wi-Fi card. I should pop up. I'll, I'll, I'll leave the I won't even unplug the antennas. Okay. Like I said, if one of those cars is shorted, it's going to prevent this thing from uh, booting up. All right, still nothing. So, yeah, I'm not going to spend too much time on this laptop. But so I did notice that before it was failing, it started flickering. So this wire actually looks like it feeds the LCD. So I bring that up, and then this is, looks like the main power right there, coming from the jack, the barrel jack. Um, but I am getting power to the motherboard, so. I suspect that's not probably the issue. That's the main. That's the main power for the board. I'll check everything though. I'm gonna make sure. Uh, looking for maybe like overheating, maybe burn connectors, water damage. So I think I'm gonna go back to my air compressor just to like sometimes like the contacts just get dirty. I mean, when I f first started fixing computers, you know, when I was 15, like like 30 years ago. Um, you know, we're talking 286, 386, 46. I mean, it was pretty common where you, the RAM would just get dirty. I don't know. And you get to clean the contacts. All right. Um, oh, there's look at the RAM contacts. I just took it out of there. So I'm going to grab some uh, alcohol and some Q-tips and clean that off. Well, one of the reasons why I look at the RAM is I flip this over, turn it on. The fan would come on. And they go off. So um, that kind of usually makes me think that it's usually a, either a RAM problem or a power supply problem. But lots of time I've seen that it's just being a RAM problem. All right, sorry, that's my power on. Fan comes on, and then goes off. Turn back on. Fan off. All right, so I got this thing to fire again. So I did a BIOS reset, so I just held it in the uh, thing for 30 seconds, but that actually didn't fix it. Um, but I just let you know, you can actually do a, a BIOS reset. That'll clear all the BIOS settings. Um, so I was messing with the RAM, took one stick out, and it's possible I have a bad piece of RAM, but it also could be intermittent, intermittent motherboard, so it's not... Um, yeah, there's no... It's not... It's sort of intermittent, whatever it is. So I'm going to go back and clean the contacts again on the memory and see if that makes any difference. Some of the contacts I can't get into here. Um, I don't want a light, but yeah, on the other side, I can get the bottom contacts, but the inner contacts. So hopefully it's not a bad piece of RAM. Well, I mean, actually, that'd be simple if it was a bad piece of RAM. But um, well, let's see if I can repeat this. Um, and this is the first time I've gotten to boot up. Okay. Okay, wow. Okay. Oh, well, it's funny that I just bought a new laptop, too. <laughs> I actually got a really good deal over at Micro Center. Core i7, 16 gig of RAM, M2 drive, like 300 bucks. Uh, 8th gen Intel i7. Um, yeah, I don't ever usually buy brand new laptops. Um, okay, um, uh, all right, well, that's a good sign, I guess. So let me show you an old trick I learned back in the 90s when I was fixing up PCs, a um, long time ago. I use a pencil eraser, works great for cleaning these contacts, but on the inside, 
I'm gonna use some of my um, deoxid just because I can't get a, a Q-tip in there. But this stuff is incredible. It's super expensive, but it's dude, it's incredible. I mean, it just basically dissolves the uh, oxidation on it. Right, so I'm gonna put a little deoxid on the actual pins. I'm gonna let it soak. All right, looks like we're uh, booting up again with both sticks of RAM. Um, 8 gig, 8 gig, and uh, all right, I'm going to put my M SATA drive, boot into Windows, see what happens. All right, so it's fully booted. Yeah, so sometimes just removing the uh, RAM is not enough. You have to clean the contacts, too. But um, what's weird is, like, the screen was flickering, though. Like, when I actually originally had the problem, like, it was stuck on uh, BIOS post. Like, you could see the Dell screen on there. But the whole thing was like flickering. So that's actually what made me think it was some kind of power problem. But yeah, I received the connector, the LCD connector. Um, it just seemed like it uh, the problem was corrected once I started messing with the RAM. But um, yeah, it's unusual. I'm not used to having the, like I said, the screen flicker when the RAM goes bad. Um, okay, well, I'm back in business. Now I have an extra laptop, I guess. Let me take my IT stuff off here. Um, Maybe give it to my kid, I'm not sure. So, all right, cool little laptop though. It's, it's nice and tiny. Yeah, I originally got it to fit in my work bag. So, all right, so what is it? It's a Dell uh, Latitude E7 250. So, I think it's considered like, like a 12 inch laptop. All right, guys, cool. Hope this video helps somebody.